Hi everyone, it's William with Dorsey and Company. We've received a lot of requests in the past relating to spark resistant or explosion proof in hazardous environments and how you specify a fan, how you select a fan for those environments. Sometimes we're asked, I need an explosion proof fan or we see that in a schedule. So we've decided to create a video that really breaks that down and goes through all the details of selecting a fan uh, for those types of environments. So in this video, we'll go over a basic overview of what, uh, how fans are classified that will meet these environments that you're looking for. And then we'll go into the different classifications of those spaces, just a high level overview. Then we'll go into spark resistant construction on the fans, what important key items you should schedule uh, when designing around these fans. Then we'll briefly cover some fan models that either are advertised as spark resistant, either A, B, or C, and they'll show up in the submittal that way, or fans that simply just meet the intent of that spark resistant construction requirement. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Then we'll go over the key reminders and kind of summarize what we've talked about in the video before jumping into a demonstration at the end. So sometimes we see, like I said, I require an explosion proof fan or I need an explosion proof fan or we'll say provide explosion proof fan as a note on a schedule but an explosion proof fan doesn't exist fans are actually rated based on spark resistance or spark resistant construction motors are available with explosion proof enclosures or explosion resistant enclosures depending on how you define that some people say resistant some say proof but really what it means is that the internal components will help contain an internal motor fire or explosion, but it's not intended to eliminate a job site explosion at a fan source. Again, an explosion proof fan is not available. That's not a, a proper term for it. So class one locations, we'll talk about this briefly at a high level. Uh, there are your vapors and gases in quantities that would produce an explos explosion in type environment or ignite. And uh, div 1 means that they are always existing and they're there under normal conditions, whereas div 2 means uh, that they are there in the space in an accident. They're not always there, but if they could, it could happen, you know. So class 1, div 1 is how you describe that. Class 2 is air laden dust or debris that could result in an explosive environment or ignitable mi mixture. Again, div 1 means it's always there, it's normal. Div 2 means it could happen, but it's not normal. And then there's also groups A through G and class 3, and there's a lot more detail to it. And those are just kind of the class one, and class 1 and 2 and div 1 and 2 that we see a lot for explosive type environments. So I encourage you to go to that link there at the bottom of the page Green Hex done a great article and done a great write-up that goes into so much more detail on all of these classes, divisions, and groups. So like I said, AMCA has classified what spark resistant construction is, but it's not a certification, it's only a guideline. So in order to help select a fan with the construction you need, you know, it's it's helpful to know is the fan in the hazardous air, meaning that the motor is also in the hazardous air, or is it only the airstream that's hazardous and it's passing through the fan? For example, maybe an inline fan versus a utility set, the motor can be out of the airstream in a utility set, it can in, a, in an inline fan as well. But those types of things determine if what the motor needs to be rated for and what the fan needs to be rated for. So Spark A, it's the most strict. No sparking components in the airstream, all non-ferrous. An example would be all aluminum construction or an aluminum airstream. Now, steel shafts can still be in there, but they need to be covered in non-ferrous material, and the impeller bearings and shaft need to be adequately restrained to prevent lateral or axial shift. So that's only available on our CSW or our big industrial blower. We can go small sizes in that as well, but that's our only available fan for Spark A at this time. If the fan is in the hazardous air and the motor is subjected to the hazardous air, then you'll need that explosion proof motor or explosion resistant motor enclosure. But one thing to note is sometimes we jump to Spark A and 
it might not be necessary. So it's something to think about. Are other devices in this space also rated for Spark A or explosion proof? You know, are the lights and switches and thermostats all rated for that type of environment? It's not always the case. Something to think about. Maybe it's not necessary to go to Spark A. So then Spark B, it just it's a middle ground. It's the step down from Spark A. It's non-ferrous impeller and a bearing ring, aluminum rub ring, for example. Ferrous hubs, shafts, and hardware are allowed, but again, you need to prevent shifting in those components to keep anything from contacting something and creating a spark. And then Spark C, simply the least strict, just constructed so that no two ferrous components will rub or strike together. And if you're ever uncertain, just contact us or your local GreenHeck representative and we'll go into more detail and help you select a fan to meet your needs. Most requests we, we receive are for battery rooms, paint storage booths, and chemical storage applications. So we'll talk about motor enclosure. That's one key thing that needs to be on your schedule if you need something out of the ordinary. And explosion resistant or explosion proof, like I said, would be required if it's going to be in the airstream. But if you're using a utility set and the air is just passing through it and the motor is not going to be subjected, let's say you're putting a shaft seal on that blower, then maybe you can get away with a TEFC, totally enclosed motor, and maybe not. That's going to be up to you. Um, maybe you want to go explosion proof just to go to the more conservative or safe side. You know, that's your call. And so then the next one is uh, schedule the fan construction type, whether it uh, meets the intent of spark A, B, or C or whether you just say spark A, B, or C, that's your call. We'll get into the intent in a couple slides from now and go into a little bit more detail on that. But the key thing here is do not schedule a class, division, and group. Different manufacturers interpret that differently, different suppliers interpret that differently, and you may end up with a different type of fan than you originally wanted. So um, some manufacturers are a lot stricter than others and uh, that kind of thing last thing you want to do is specify a fan that meets spark a but because it was scheduled class div group that somebody else interpreted as spark b or c you're being provided with a spark b or c piece of equipment so the most compliant fan models from greenheck and these aren't all of them this is just a kind of a rough list of what we see is most popular. You've got your utility sets, your your fume jet models, your big industrial blowers, and your fiberglass fans. It's also technically Spark A. We don't often see it except for in extreme environments. We'd normally go with a CSW. And then your industrial process fans. you got Spark B and C on most of these fans. Something to look for. Uh, those are um, key models we see a lot of. For roof-mounted uh, vector fans are often popular as well uh, because we can get Spark B and C in them and it's shooting that air up really high. And inline fans, it's typically a QEI. If you need to keep that Spark B or C requirement, we see those uh, a lot. Um, if you're moving very little air, it can be interpreted as uh, being overkill. So that's why on the next slide we'll talk about the intent and why maybe you do not need to have it say spark be on the schedule or maybe you do depending on um, how strict those requirements will be as i said earlier different manufacturers and different suppliers interpret your class div group a little bit differently and what actually needs to be provided so sometimes some manufacturers are very conservative on not listing certain equipment as spark resistant classification like spark a or b or c and even though if you really look at it they do meet the intent of spark b and because like i said earlier that amca says here's your classifications but it doesn't really classify a fan as such so it's up to the manufacturers mainly so for example our up blast fans they meet the, inst the intent of spark b because you've got an aluminum wheel and an aluminum housing and your motor's out of the airstream. Some would even argue you may be closer to Spark A, but we're going to say you meet the intent of Spark B. You're, you're close enough to Spark B and, and what you're requiring. If we go back to those Spark A, B, and C requirements, you can look at the, the uplast fan, the CUE or CUBE, and we'd meet most of them for Spark B or all of them. 
Same with the CW, CWB, it's the same fan basically, only mounted on a sidewall. Now the BSQ or the SQ, we've seen some engineers go this route, we've seen others avoid this route, but it's we can provide an explosion proof motor enclosure, no problem. Once you do that, aluminum rub rings are added. And we've got plenty of other models that meet the intent because the, uh, for example, the propeller or the the moving the fan wheel, there we go, is aluminum, so it won't spark against a steel enclosure. Please verify these with us if you need something and you're not able to go to a actual listed um, by Greenheck fan as spark A, B, or C, ask us and we'll find something that will work for you. So key reminders. Ideally, if you can, keep the motor out of the airstream. It depends on where you are applying these fans. If you can keep the motor out of the airstream or if you don't even need the motor in the hazardous environment, that's, that's all the better. Now, aluminum rub rings, they sometimes are added automatically. This is in case the shaft breaks loose. It's going to rub on this aluminum before it, it rubs on anything else. So it's kind of that added safety factor. You can get spark resistant bearings as well. Aluminum construction, that never hurts. Like an SQ, if you can do aluminum construction instead of galvanized, you're only helping to increase your spark resistant classification or meeting the intent of something better. It looks like you're, you're trying to meet a higher requirement. Uh, again, explosion proof enclosure on the motor. If, if especially if it's going to be in the hazardous space, if you can do any shaft seals, that's only going to help contain the the hazardous air in the airstream. For example, uh, industrial blowers. If you do a shaft seal, it's only going to help keep air from leaking out of there. And the key thing here, we haven't talked a whole lot about. Again, go to our website, but disconnects or your electrical enclosures, they also need to be appropriately rated for that environment. So. For example, if you add a explosion proof motor to an SQ or a BSQ fan, the disconnect in caps will change from a NEMA, 7 or a NEMA 1 by default to a NEMA 7 and 9 to provide a disconnect that will be appropriately rated for that environment. So I think the presentation's done at this point. We're going to dive into some demos. So first off, we're going to dive into ECAPS, and I'll show you how to make a couple of selections really quickly in ECAPS. So if we go to inline fans to start with, click on that, where you'll see the spark is under, oh, there it was, right here, under certifications and special requirements, you'll see spark B or C for inline fans. Like I said, CSW at this point is the only spark A fan available. So Looking at inline fans, it's not going to show up here. So if we say Spark B, and then we say 5000 CFM at 1.5 inches and 2300 feet, here are our models available. So like I said, the QEI, you get Spark B, TCB, it's meets the intent, but it's not actual Spark B rated. So Again, here's your little caution. Oh, you're within 5% of fans max RPM. And you can then look at what fans you want to want to select. So let's look at the TCB. Looks like a great fan curve. Then we can customize it and add it to our fan schedule. just that easy so and again like I we just uh, worked on a video for the FEG we're under 5 horsepower on that fan so we don't even need to worry about the FEG requirements so if we go to blowers and again certification special requirements spark resistant spark A and we'll go back here Let's do 15,000 CFM at 3 inches, same altitude. 
then you'll see that only CSWs and your FRP fans are going to show up. So if we click on one of them, highest ranked one, we can see where it's operating at. It's out here. But now, I'll go here, our motor's 15 horsepower recommended. So now we have to follow the FEG again. So it's as easy as back into column chooser, scroll down until you find FEG and points within peak and apply. So then we'll just make sure we got 20 fans available. And now we've got down to 14. So now our, our, our first ranked one, we're still within the 15% and our FEG is 85. So we're good to go with this fan selection. So I'll be able to schedule this with EF2. And that's how you do it in the ECAPS. So next we'll jump into CAPS. Okay, so now we're going to dive into CAPS and I'll show you how to make a couple quick selections here that would be compliant. I There's two different ways that you can do it. The first is you can go through an application, select by application, fans, spark resistant. And then it will break down all the different fans that either meet and can show spark resistance on their submittal or that meet the intent, but Green Hat doesn't necessarily list them as such. So, for example, the CUE, CUB, CW, CWB are all here. Um, your fume jets, though, they are compliant, so they're here. And, uh, excuse me, compliance not the right word. They are listable, and Green Hat lists them as Spark B and C. Um, and then we've got your QEIs and etc. So you can always just indicate what kind of fan you're looking for and uh, what kind of direction the air is moving, that kind of thing. You can go that route. So for this one, I'm going to select a QEI again and go with a 5000 at 1.5 inches. And right here, you'll see Spark B selected. Normally, it would default to steel. You can select Spark B or C and see how it's under material. There isn't a spark resistance field um, on the QEI. Uh, it depends on the model and what fan you're looking at and what that might be under. So look for material for the QEI. And then I'll select, here I got a five horsepower motor. I don't need to worry about the FEG or anything. Um, and then uh, I'll just go through, make sure my fan curve looks good under construction. I'll verify everything here looks good. It says Spark B, and uh, you know I can add as isolation and all of that, um, but I won't worry about it now. I've already gone through this selection, so it's already set to explosion proof, um, but default is typically open drip proof, so I want to select explosion proof here, and that'd be it for the QEI, and for the next selection, I'm going to select the CSW because I need a Spark A fan. And let's think of the QEI as I got the fan in line and it's going to be in the space. The motor's in the hazardous air, and so I needed that explosion proof motor. Well, now for this one, I'll look at uh, a CSW as if it were roof mounted. The motor's outside the airstream and uh, motors outside the airstream so I won't need an explosion proof enclosure necessarily and that's up to me but um, I've decided I don't need it the material see same sort of field but now we have different options available with the CSW we have a little bit more customization available aluminum entire unit including the frame and everything or stainless steel airstream this is actually where you'd select your spark resistance under spark resistance. And for this case, I've selected spark A. Now when the selection comes up, I'll have a motor that needs to be compliant with the energy code, see our other video for that. And I'll just pick something that's a little quieter, maybe down right here. And it's a little quieter, a little bit lower brake horsepower compliant with the FEG requirements outlined in our other video. It's kind of maxed out. It's something I'll take into account 
but for example maybe I know my external statics rounded way up so this isn't necessarily an issue but it's something to think about you always want to leave some tolerance some engineers leave 5% some 10% others 20% so it's, it's really up to whoever's selecting the equipment and you know, I can add isolation and all of that here I'll just select UL705 uh, all of this is dependent on the application so I'll skip through that I'll go with a TEFC motor though because it, it will be outside and it doesn't hurt and then I'll go on to I like to select shaft grounding actually on motors of this size as well so I'll select that now under accessories this is where you'll select your shaft seal, your neoprene or felt. I'll go neoprene on this one. It just adds an extra layer of protection to keep all the air in the airstream and in the fan. And um, just try to keep the hazardous material shooting up instead of um, coming out towards the motor or anything. So that would be it for this selection. And under dampers, for example, if you do want a backdraft damper, you can do this gravity backdraft damper and it is a spark a rated backdraft damper so green heck takes that into account as well um, now you'll see if we add a disconnect switch it'll let you pick any kind of disconnect switch I haven't sp specified explosion proof but sometimes for little chemical cabinets where uh, maybe there's some mild flammable gases and the owner won't really want to pay for an, a, a listed um, spark resistant fan like a QEI so maybe you'll go to an SQ and you'll run it at CFM quarter of inch static and you'll see that you can't select a spark resistance here and that way you know the fan won't show up on the submittal as having a certain spark resistance. So these would meet the intent. Um, I know the SQ would meet the intent, for example. So when I go to select it, I'll know I need, I can't pick the very green. I normally always pick them, but I can't do that with an explosion proof motor. So I'll look at something that maybe is close to the CFM I'm looking for. Maybe maybe 884 is close enough or maybe I'll go a little high and go to 1022 and then I'll go on the next I'll look at the fan curve first and then I'll go to the configuration for example maybe we're putting this on a VFD the VFD is out of the space so it won't need to be in a NEMA 7 or 9 enclosure and I'll select aluminum construction so that's basically saying I've got an aluminum fan wheel now it's in an aluminum construction so I'm only stepping up what I'm meeting the intent the spark resistant uh, so arguably you could be closer to B or A versus being closer to spark C but we're, again we're meeting the intent this isn't actually going to show up on the smell it's not listed this way but if you look at the AMCA requirements for spark resistance that would be what it would be close to so you all 705 and I'm going to pick explosion proof in this case you'll notice sometimes the motor is going to show up red you'll see here details motors invalid motor does not fit you might have to tinker around with a different motor size different voltage whatever it might need to be you'll notice you can't do a fractional single phase horsepower motor in a high efficiency motor but because it's kind of a life safety device um, I believe it it won't fall under the code requirement needing that because it's a life safety device you're getting the explosive material out of the atmosphere and nothing else is available so the next thing I want to show you is the disconnect switch. Green Heck will automatically make this dis disconnect switch NEMA 9 and 7 or 7 and 9 and they'll allow for it to be mounted and wired as well. But you have other options available there and um, that should be it for this selection. Um, as always, if you guys ever have any questions, please give us a call or send us an email. All right, thank you.